Hi guys, I hope you're good. I've met up with my friend Jen and we're exploring the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. I'm staying at a campsite in the village of Greenfield near Oldham and the canal is a short walk away. This is French's Wharf Marina, and that boat Kingfisher is actually available on Airbnb. This is the first narrow canal I've ever seen. It's blowing my mind a bit, to be honest. Is my boat really that narrow? This lock is very cute. But why are there two gates? And why does one end have two gates, but the other end only has one? The River Tame runs alongside this part of the canal. It's a tributary of the River Trent. There's a little museum over there. Everything about this canal is just so quaint. Even the water points are cute. The Huddersfield Canal is about 20 miles long with 74 locks. It opened in 1811, closed in 1944, was partially restored in the 1980s before fully reopening in 2001. I was a bit disappointed that we hadn't seen any boats moving. It was a bit windy, I suppose, but also very sunny. Autumn has really arrived up here. The trees were beautiful shades of oranges and browns, their leaves decorating the towpath. Jen has her own YouTube channel where she makes videos about mostly road travel. I've left a link in the description. The canal crosses the Pennine Hills. To go up or downhill, canals use locks, but these are expensive to build and to maintain. So, if you can't go over the hills, you have to go under them. Benjamin Outram, the engineer in charge of the construction of the canal, decided to build the Stand Edge Tunnel. It is the longest canal tunnel in the country at 5,700 yards long. Today, there are four Stand Edge Tunnels, including three railway tunnels, as well as the canal one. When the canal tunnel first opened, 
boatmen would leg their boats through, lying on their backs on the boat and using their feet to propel the boat by pushing against the tunnel walls. It could take three hours to leg a fully loaded boat through. To travel through the Stand Edge Tunnel today, you have to book in advance and be accompanied by a CRT chaperone. Other boat tubers have done brilliant videos of their cruises through the tunnel. Can anyone tell me what this building is? It's going to be surrounded soon by new homes. This little game alongside the canal has information on the history and the restoration of the canal. The area was very popular. If I hadn't known it was here, I wouldn't expect to find a canal in the area because of the landscape. But sometimes it's easy to forget the industrial history and that when the canal opened there would have been multiple wool and cotton mills in the area sending their goods by water. That is, of course, until the railways took over. This hill catches my eye. I decide I want to climb up it tomorrow, so we sit down beside the marina and find a map and walking route. I think it could be quite cool to live in this marina, the location is brilliant. We're back at the start now, I wave goodbye to Jen at the train station and walk the 10 minutes or so back to my campsite. You can just see my van there in the distance. I'd probably stay here again because the location is great and the lady running the site was so nice. The only downside was the showers were closed and I didn't really understand why because they are in the same cubicle as the toilets which were open. Oh well, back to the van for the evening. A quick fill of water and a last admiring view of the area. I think there's the hill that I'm going to climb up tomorrow. I spent the rest of the night watching a film and listening to the rain start up again before finishing with a hot water bottle and another early night. Join me next time to see if I make it up the hill and see me meet a dodgy bloke in the woods. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.